The Jungle is a 1906 novel written by American journalist and novelist Upton Sinclair. Sinclair wrote the novel to portray the harsh conditions and exploited lives of immigrants in the United States in Chicago and similar industrialized cities. For today's human resource professionals, The Jungle gives us much to think about. Let's take a look at The Jungle from a human resource management perspective. First, who is Upton Sinclair? Born in 1878 in Baltimore, Maryland, Sinclair's father was a liquor salesman and an alcoholic. As he was growing up, Upton's family moved frequently as his father was a not successful in his career. Upton developed a love for reading when he was just five years old. His mother was religious and strict. Sinclair did not start school until he was 10 years old. Sinclair's grandparents, his mother's parents, were wealthy and he often stayed with them. He began writing to help pay for his college expenses. In 1892, Sinclair enrolled at City College in New York at the age of 14. He supported himself through college by writing boys' adventure stories and jokes. He also sold ideas to cartoonists. In college, Sinclair became a member of the Socialist Party. At age 16, Sinclair decided not to have anything to do with his mother, staying away from her for over 35 years. In 1897, Sinclair studied law briefly at Columbia University. In 1906, Sinclair published The Jungle. In the late 1920s, Upton founded the California chapter of the ACLU. Sinclair made several failed attempts at running for elected office as a socialist. Sinclair died in 1969. Editors of a popular socialist newspaper asked Upton Sinclair to go to Chicago and investigate the meat packing industry. Specifically, they wanted him to evaluate the lives and workers in the stockyards. In 1904, Sinclair spent seven weeks in disguise working undercover in Chicago's meat packing plants to research his novel. Publishers felt the story was too shocking to publish, so he financed the first version of the book himself. Eventually, he found a commercial printer, and the full text was published in 1906. Sinclair became known as a muckraker. The term muckraker was used to characterize reform-minded American journalists who attacked established institutions and leaders as corrupt. Theodore Roosevelt coined the term to refer to a group of journalists who devoted themselves to exposing the ills of industrialization. In contemporary use, the term describes either a journalist who writes as an, in an adversarial or alternative tradition, or a non-journalist whose purpose in publication is to advocate for reform or change. Investigative journalists view the muckrakers as early influencers and continuation of watchdog journalism. The Jungle was very successful, but not as Upton had hoped. The readers were more concerned with the issue of tainted beef than the concern for mistreatment of workers. As an example, the Meat Inspection Act passed in 1906, and more laws followed that addressed food safety. Upton said, I aimed at the public heart and by accident hit them in the stomach. With the income from the jungle, Sinclair founded the utopian Helican Home Community in Inglewood, New Jersey. You can see it here. Sinclair invested over $30,000, what would equate to nearly $800,000 adjusted for inflation on the endeavor. The colony had a rigorous screening process for which applicants, including a restriction against those of color. The application stated the colony should be open to any white person of good moral character. They explicitly banned black people and less publicly banned Jews. The colony burned down under suspicious circumstances within a year. Let's talk a bit about our friends, who Jurgis would call family. Jurgis is a Lithuanian immigrant who believes in himself and his work ethic, but finds making a living for his wife and a family takes more than hard work and dedication. Ona is Jurgis's fiance and later his wife. Elsbieta is Onis's stepmother. She endures one tragedy after another never really living, only surviving. Maria is Ona's cousin. Although this prototype of strength and endurance for most of the novel, she too is eventually defeated by the capitalistic system. Jonas is Elsbieta's brother. He comes to America with the rest of this family, but can only find survival by abandoning them. Antanas is Jurgis's father. 
From the onset, he is determined to contribute to the family's success in Chicago. However, unlike in other countries, the American he encounters, the elderly are neither appreciated or respected, and he dies destitute and deceived. Finally, we see a number of Elzbieta's children who illustrate the abuse of children that suffered as a result of the Industrial Revolution. They all either die or are sent to work at much too young of an age. And finally, Antanas, the only child of Ona and Jurgis. He's Jurgis's hope for the future, but he suffers a fate similar to his mother and cousins. Now I want to ask three questions about what the jungle means to human resource management today. I'm not going to suggest or surmise answers to these questions, but point in directions of the issues that I think we need to consider. First, what does the jungle teach us about human resource management? From my perspective, Upton Sinclair's account of the stockyards in Chicago in the early 1900s reminds human resource professionals of three primary issues. First, regulation matters. We're accountable to the letter of the law, but also the spirit of the law. And there are reasons that regulation exists. Second, employees matter. Our job as human resource professionals are to be partners who are experts, employee champions, and leaders. Because employees matter, our ethics matter in the application of those three functions. Finally, history matters. We must learn from our mistakes, both ours and others, and anything less is failure. Second, what insights does the jungle give us about employment and labor legislation? submit to you nine primary employment or labor legislation issues that you should consider in answering this question. Those that come top of mind to me are OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Act, the FLSA or the Fair Labor Standards Act, the NLRA or the National Labor Relations Act, the FMLA or the Family Medical Leave Act, the Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act, Title VII of the Civil Rights Act, unemployment insurance and related regulation, as well as work comp or workers' compensation insurance and related legislation, and finally, the WARN Act, or the Worker Adjustment and Retaining Notification Act. There are many more as you consider answering this poignant and important question about the history of both the letter and the spirit of the law and what that means for us in a historical context as well as compliance today and the ethical treatment of employees. Finally, how does the jungle help human resource management professionals look at immigration issues today? As you consider immigration and employment after reading The Jungle, here are some current statistics that help you frame your thinking. Again, I'm not going to suggest an answer to this question, but challenge you to take the information that you see here and surmise or answer the question for yourself, thinking about the important and critical issues that Sinclair brings to our attention, as well as what do we need to think and work through as human resource professionals today in a modern workplace in our current society. These immigration and employment statistics might help you think about the context of reality as you consider answering this question.